All right, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of SideQuest Podcast. Listen in and level up. I have a great episode for you today, but first, as always, let's get through the show notes. If you're not following the Facebook page, head over to Facebook, type SideQuest Fitness into the search bar and like the page. There, you're going to get updates on podcast episodes, articles when they get posted, and you're going to get a brand new taco recipe every Tuesday for Taco Camp. Uh, plus lots of other shenanigans and nerd talk throughout the week. So make sure you head over to Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. My handle is SideQuestFM. If you want to see some cool videos and random stuff on Instagram as well, you can follow me on Instagram, same handle, SideQuestFM, or follow me on Snapchat, SideQuestFit. Follow me there. Send me your questions. Uh, I want to get all the questions from you, help you as much as I can on your fitness journey or your journey in life, whatever it may be. But head over to Snapchat, SideQuest Fit, follow me there. You get a little more personal, in-depth look at the shenanigans I get into throughout uh, every day. Uh, But I do love getting questions from the community, so please send them out to me. If you have not left a review for the podcast, please head over to iTunes. If you're not listening on iTunes and you listen on SoundCloud or Stitcher, leave a review there as well. When you leave reviews, it helps me move up the charts on the iTunes store so that more people can see and hear the amazing guests that I've had on and have on each and every single week. So make sure you head over there. And don't forget, if you haven't picked up your copy of The 7 Principles of Fat Loss, head over to sidequestfitness.com forward slash 7 principles and you can pick up your copy of The 7 Principles of Fat Loss. These are the same seven principles I follow each and every day and teach my clients to help them shred away more body fat, unlock heroic strength, and just look better naked. So if you want to unlock strength or just look better naked in the mirror, head over again, grab those seven principles of fat loss, and start following those today. With 2017 right around the corner, that means you are starting to think about New Year's resolutions. Fitness and getting in shape is one of the biggest resolutions people make every year. But every year, halfway through January, almost 30% of people have given up. They quit. Six months in, that number is even smaller, or people who are still going with their New Year's resolution. But why wait? Why wait until the gyms get packed in January? Why put it off until after the holidays? Start today. I still have a few spots open in my online coaching program. So if you're interested in losing fat, building strength, or gaining muscle this winter, head over to sidequestfitness.com slash coach and apply today. My program is custom designed for your specific goals. I'll tell you exactly what you need to do or not to do to help you finally achieve your goal of gaining strength, losing fat, or building muscle. You have constant accountability. I know what it's like to do this by yourself. It's dangerous to go alone. And most of the time, that's what you try to do in the new year. You try and do this alone. You hire a trainer at the local gym, but they only keep you accountable when you see them. And the real battle is out in the real world, not in the gym. The real world is where you spend the majority of the time. And with an online coach, you have access to me 24-7 to answer your questions and help you succeed in your goals. You can consider me your Gandalf guiding you on your quest. You also get access to a, an app that I use on uh, line that you can use on your phone. So your program is right there no matter what with videos to guide you through the exercises if you have any questions on anything. So if you want to stop feeling weak, unconfident, or depressed about how you look naked, then head over to sidequestfitness.com forward slash coach and apply today. And let's start kicking some ass together. Let's get your goals on track for the new year. And let's not wait until 2017 to get started. Let's start today. Let's start kicking some ass, shredding some fat, putting on muscle, or leveling up your strength today. So head over to sidequestfitness.com forward slash coach and apply. All right, guys, I have a great episode for you today. I'm going to get a little personal in this one. I'm going to go over uh, a dream I had as a kid. The dream I had of becoming a great basketball player, the next Michael Jordan, and leading my college, the school I loved my entire life, the University of North Carolina, to a national title. It never happened. But in this episode, I want to go over this and share this story with you. Uh, so hopefully, you can take this 
uh, on you with the road. But this is what I call a Carolina blue dream. Step up and you gotta get it fit this Host Rob at the moment and the quest is You gotta check it and wreck it You're breaking personal records And with the help of the guests You won't be guessing on the lessons That's a plus five fierce Got a low key bamf right here You wanna meet him There's no better way to greet him Than to strike a boss pose Take a look into the mirror From the start of November Until the madness of March My life becomes obsessed with college basketball During those months, my heart and soul belong to my favorite team, the Tar Heels of North Carolina. As a kid, I grew up with only one dream, and like most dreams of any kid in North Carolina, it was to play for the Tar Heels, to be a basketball player, to be the next Michael Jordan. That desire was sparked by my undying love, one, for the University of North Carolina, but of course, always, my undying love for Michael Jordan. I mean, who in the 90s didn't want to be like Mike? I was no exception. I wanted to be Mike. I wanted to soar through the sky and dunk and hit game-winning shots. I was four when I picked up my first basketball after staying with my grandparents one night. And somehow, uh, I successfully dribbled it for more than two seconds. And my grandfather said something to me that has always stayed with me and fueled a decade-long dream more than a decade-long dream uh, for, for my young self. And he said, you keep practicing, Rob, and you can play for the Tar Heels one day. Now, see, the thing about being a kid is I had a huge imagination. And hearing those words, oh, man, visions of hitting shots like Michael Jordan, beating Duke, winning a national title, and then playing in the NBA rolled through my mind like a tsunami. The thought of being a Tar Heel made my heart race. I could play for the team I loved more than anything. But there was one problem. See, at five years old, I was barely three feet tall. And a regulation-sized basketball goal was colossal. Chucking a ball larger than my tiny head seven feet in the air and into the hoop felt impossible. When faced with insurmountable obstacles as a kid, there was nowhere else that I retreated. But right inside to my imagination. And thankfully, my grandfather one year, when I was three or four, had bought me the Little Tykes basketball hoop. Now, you might remember this, and maybe if you have kids, they have one as well. But it's an adjustable plastic basketball goal that you can adjust up to like six feet. When you're only three feet and it's twice as tall, it's a lot less intimidating than a 10-foot tall basketball goal. This basketball goal fueled my imagination for years. I created basketball leagues out of my own imagination, full of teams for my elementary school to play against. We didn't have a basketball team, obviously, but I created them. And all of my friends joined me in my imagination playing basketball to win championships. We went undefeated. Well, except that one time that we lost, and that was uh, was heart-wrenching. It was heartbreaking. I told you, I had a huge imagination as a kid, so I imagined all of these things. But what was great about that goal is that I could dunk. I could live out my dreams of being Mike and soaring across the sky from the free throw line as a kid and dunking on that goal. I mean, I could hit jump shots, three-pointers. Oddly enough, I could perform one-man alley-oops. Whatever, I was the only person playing, but it was awesome. I mean, I I could live my dreams on this goal. And I had a plan. I had a plan. I knew what was going to happen. I was going to play on this small goal until I was old enough. Eight. I thought eight was the magic number. And obviously strong enough so that I could throw a basketball into an actual goal. Except here's what sort of happened. Remember when you got really good at riding uh, a tricycle, like you had all three wheels and you were like, yeah, I'm the best bicycle guy around. And then your dad was like, well, let's take off, let's take off the training wheels and you can ride a bike. And the first time you ride a bike with only two wheels, you hurt yourself and you wanted to cry. Yeah. See, I got so good at making shots on the small goal that I didn't understand why I would want to go to a real goal if I knew I was going to suck because in my imaginary world, I was awesome. Well, I decided that my grandfather was right and that if I was going to be the next Michael Jordan, I needed to move up to the big boy goal. 
And he told me, he told me straight up, Robbie, you will never play for the Tar Heels if you don't move up to an actual basketball goal. Listen, I know kids hear a lot of things and we do a lot of things, but that, that, those words at that point in my life hit me hard because I knew it was the truth. So I moved on from my tiny plastic goal where I had been the superstar of an imaginary league and started practicing at home on the regulation size goal that my dad had built. And basketball became my life. After school, you could find me with my friends playing horse 21 or three on three pickup games with all the neighborhood kids pretty much every day. On the weekends, after playing against each other in our little league games, we'd play late at night under a pale blue streetlight, unsure at what points where our shots were even going because it was so dark. And all that we knew was that if we heard a swish of the chain link net, we had made our shot. Now here's what's really awesome. During the summer of 2000, only 16 years ago, I had the chance to attend North Carolina basketball camp. I lived on the UNC campus for a week, and ironically enough, life found it fitting that I should hold my drills and my practices in the Dean Smith Center, the place I wanted to play my entire life. I was playing there. I was running suicides, doing layup drills, learning defense, learning offense, learning all of it right there in Mecca, the place that I worshipped as a kid. And on the final day of that camp, as I walked out of the doors of the Dean Smith Center, I whispered to myself, I'll be back in a few years. After camp, I knew my dream would become a reality because no one wanted it more than me. No one. For the next few months, I got up every day and practiced free throw after free throw, layup after layup, jump shot after jump shot, until I was called for breakfast. Rain or shine, you could find me outside shooting hoops, running sprints, putting in the work that needed to be done to make my dream a reality. I wanted it more than anyone. I shot the ball until I couldn't lift my arms, damn near caught pneumonia from shooting in the cold, and challenged my weak points day in and day out because I knew I had to make them stronger if I was ever going to be a Tar Heel. At least that's how it should have been. What really happened played out more like this. When my friends wanted to play another game of 21, I tried to find a way to go back inside and play another game of Madden or eat more pizza. Rainy days were spent in front of my television, binging on Star Wars or playing Knights of the Old Republic. If my coach or my parents tried to tell me that I needed to practice outside of the designated times I was in the gym for Little League, I scoffed at their notion and went back to my room to continue playing my Xbox. There was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to be a basketball star. What I didn't want to do was the work, the hustle, the grind, the blood, sweat, tears, and the sacrifices. None of that I thought I needed. I thought if I wished for it, prayed for it, if I craved it more than anyone else alive, after after all, I was a good kid. I mean, I had good grades. I ate my veggies, I went to church, I listened to my parents. I mean, my dreams would come true, right? I was doing all the right things that life said I needed to do to be a good boy. The jersey, the shoes, the chance to smile the most deliciously sadistic smile at Coach K as I hit a three to beat Duke. I wanted all of that. I wanted it more than anything in this world. But putting in the work to become great? Nah, I didn't want that. Ironically enough, like Michael Jordan, I didn't make my high school team when I tried out in the winter of 2000. But unlike Mike, I wasn't good enough to make the JV team either. You know, on the court, I played with passion and heart. The passion and heart can only get you so far. They can't make up for poor conditioning or a lack of strength and toughness. I remember sitting in my bedroom the night I found out that I hadn't made the cut for JV. And I began to tell myself, if only I had made that one layup during the scrimmage. (laughs) Or if only I was a friend of the coach's son. 
where if only I had worn my lucky t-shirt. I was searching for a way out. A way to not accept the fact that if only I had actually given a shit about basketball and not wanted to play my Nintendo more, I might have made the team. There's a great book by Seth Godin called Lynchpin where he talks about if only. Quote, If only is a great way to eliminate your excuse du jour. If only is an obligation because once you get rid of that item, you've got no excuse left. Only the obligation. From the day the dream of being a North Carolina basketball player was sown into my mind, I had been telling myself, if only. If only I could be a great basketball player, my dad would pave the area around the basketball goal and I wouldn't have to play on rocks. You know, I could be better as a player if only we lived closer to other families and we weren't 20 minutes outside of the nearest city. If only I had more time to practice. If only my dad would come out and shoot hoops with me. If only I could go to UNC basketball camp. If only I could make the team, I'd show the world my greatness. All of those years, every single moment of my life, that I wanted to be a basketball player. All of those if-onlys was me looking for a savior. A fortuitous moment that would fall from the heavens, and when it happened, I would be able to show the world what I could do. I was waiting for something to happen. Instead of making it happen. You know, since I've started writing and podcasting and coaching, I've had friends and family And colleagues tell me that they're impressed with my work ethic, my hustle. Truth is, the podcast, starting an online coaching business, and writing, a small part of that was all for me. Because knowing that I failed to accomplish the dream of becoming the next Michael Jordan made me realize that the next dream I had, the next thing I was passionate about, I had to dive in 100%. My mentor, John Romanello, once said this to me, and it has stuck with me since the words exited his mouth. There are no half-saved princesses in life. What's funny is that to this day, Anyone who coached or played with Michael Jordan will tell you that he was the hardest worker they've ever seen. And I won't lie, I still want to be like Mike. But now, what 10-year-old Robbie thought would be given to him because he desired it more than anything is only accomplished when I put in the work. I do try to live with no regrets in life. And what actions or inactions I've performed in life have brought me to where I am today. But there are still small regrets that ache deep within my soul. And every time I watch my team, I watch my team play on TV. Or I see some kid who has red hair sitting on the bench of the Tar Heels. I am hit in the deepest of my emotions. Because it reminds me that my inactions, my lack of willingness to put in the work, kept me from achieving the dreams I had as a kid. But now those failures have provided an ample amount of fuel to the drive I have every single day to help awesome people improve their lives through fitness or help awesome people turn their lives around and lose weight, feel better, look better, whatever it is, to write the most awesome piece that has ever been written, to record the most kick-ass podcast. All of my failures fuel that drive. And I have to be reminded of these words every single day. And whatever you're trying to accomplish in life, whatever your goals are in the gym, outside of the gym, in your relationships, it doesn't matter. Remember these words. 
just like the words my grandfather told me when I was a kid, that I could play for the Tar Heels, could, could has so much weight behind it. Remember these for whatever you try to accomplish. Dreams aren't granted. They're made. And as the new year approaches, as 2017 comes around, hell, even if it's a Monday, it doesn't matter if it's a new year. It's a new day every single day. Whatever your dreams are, wishing for them, hoping for them isn't enough. You can want something bad enough, but if you want it bad enough, you have to go get it. You have to put in the work. And it does suck sometimes when I see or think that if I had worked hard enough, if I had worked hard enough, I could have played in the Final Four with North Carolina. I could have been there in 2008, (laughs) even though they lost to Kansas. Uh, Let's just say I would have been there and would have totally changed it, but it wouldn't have mattered. I would have been there. I would have been there for that game. I would have been on that court living out my dream if I had just put in the work. Dreams aren't granted. They're made. So my challenge to you in the final weeks of 2016 and in 2017 or every single day of your life, no matter what it is, go out and make your dreams come true. You can't wish for them. You got to make them. So get out there, kick ass, and make your dreams become a reality. Step up and you gotta get it fit this Post Rob at the moment and the quest is You gotta check in and wreck it You're breaking personal records And with the help of the guests You won't be guessing on the lessons That's a plus five fears Got a low key bamf right here You wanna meet them There's no better way to greet them Than to strike a boss pose Take a look into the mirror